<laughs> I feel like Sergio, a year of Sergio in prison, I would call you and be like, hey, Sergio, what are you up to? You're like, same old thing I always do. Just, <laughs> just painting. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> Still doing paint drips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just doing paintings and um, <laughs> yeah. working on my online course. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh honey, oh honey, oh honey, oh honey, Welcome oh everybody honey, to oh honey, episode 100 oh honey, oh honey, of Waiting to Dry. Oh honey, oh honey, oh honey, this is about oh honey, as much oh honey, as planning oh honey, as we oh put honey, into oh honey, oh honey, episode 100. So, oh honey, oh honey, oh honey, oh honey. Uh, Major Key Alert! <laughs> <laughs> DJ Khaled! <laughs> uh, don't play yourself! I don't know what else he says. Are you, you, Cluminati, Cluminati, DJ Clue, <laughs> DJ Clue. Yeah. That new shit, that new uh-huh. shit. Uh-huh. Hot shit. <laughs> I am Sergio Lopez. I'm Josh Lawyer. <laughs> and this is episode one honey, one honey, one honey. <laughs> we did it, Sergio. We, we did fucking it. did it. When everyone said we couldn't do it, when they all said we'd fail, look at them now. Look at us now. (laughs) They hate us because they hate us. (laughs) From the bottom. We started from the bottom. Uh, Hell yeah. We did it. Mm -hmm. It only took a long uh, (laughs) Longer than, yeah, if we did one every week, but well. (laughs) Remember episode one, (laughs) wide-eyed. The world in front of us, the right. wind to our backs. Um, I yeah. haven't went back to listen to episode one, but I remember that being the the original awkward intro. <laughs> I, just like I can only imagine, <laughs> just like uh, what do we say next? <laughs> like, God. <laughs> uh, sometimes when I listen back to some shit, like I think I tried listening back to the first episode once, like way after, and it just makes my skin crawl. <laughs> yeah, hearing us talk. <laughs> so yeah yeah so so we did it whiskeys in hands mm-hmm. uh cheersies cheers hey everyone welcome to the pod six uh foot distant click mm-hmm. still yeah. going through that shit yeah we uh we knee bumped <laughs> yeah <laughs> we we did both knees which made us bump something else if you know what i mean <laughs> Oh. I don't even <laughs> You had three sounds there <laughs> It's like a mom who can't remember her kid's name She's like, John, I mean, Bill, I mean, say My mom was the queen of that uh, Same with my mom I, I'm pretty bad at it I'll like, call MJ like my sister's name, my aunt's name, my cousin's yeah. name uh, It's horrible uh well so what's up sergio um let's see anything different than last time we hung out mm-hmm. um kind of doing the same shit as last time nice. <laughs> really i mean yeah there's only so much you can do right now yeah i'm officially uh unemployed oh really yeah oh shit well <laughs> <laughs> I'm on unemployment, uh, so I've joined that group of folk, huh. which I'm, I don't, I don't know, I'm kind of excited about. Yeah. Um, I'm actually getting paid more than I was because of that whole, like, California extra money stuff. Oh, okay. So huh. that's pretty cool. Yeah, nice. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, I haven't got to check it, though, mm. but I assume I am. I'm almost, I did the math, I'm, I'm pretty sure I am. So was it a um, a company wide thing or just <clears throat> no? You it decided was, to. They take wanted the me point. to uh, <laughs> come back, and I was like, "I'm not going to do that right now," uh-huh. uh, for like multiple reasons, but some art reasons as well. <laughs> yeah, um, nice. But yeah, yeah. So we're and me and MJ were going to Portland Monday. Oh really? Oh shit! Huh. Yeah. <laughs> so that'll be cool mm-hmm. uh, to work on that mural. Oh nice! So we'll finally mm-hmm. get that 
done and over with and then be able to move on to the next thing. So you guys jumping right into mural work? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, we awesome. have this mural and then we have a mural we're going to do for Cooperage um, after. And then we have a private, two private murals lined up. Oh, okay. Nice. So, yeah, we have we definitely have a shitload of work on top of other work. Yeah. So, so all that stuff was probably just like put to, by the wayside for a while because of this, or well, or the was it stuff? all? Yeah. Well, we got the mural stuff right before the lockdown for Cooperage specifically. Oh, okay. And then we finally agreed on a design with the place that we were wanted to do and that they were okay with, and mm. and so we're like cool. And then, um, and then uh, we couldn't hire models to like shoot for the for right the, for the idea. Mm-hmm. So we actually have been working with models to like have them shoot, and then oh, set doing us the, the remote images. shoot thing, yeah. yeah. Uh, so we have one image for that and then we're waiting on the second one, but, but yeah, it's been, been all right. Nice. And the private one we've, we worked on one of the private, you know, that private one we did a while ago. Yeah. So, uh, that guy's also hired us to do two more. Oh shit. Wow. Uh, That's awesome. (laughs) Yeah. He's, he's very wealthy. (laughs) Um, yeah. So. So that's, what's up. Other than that, are you, are you doing the, uh, coaster show? No. Oh, you did last year though, right? Yeah. yeah. So, is that on? When's the due date on that? Soon. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm like hauling ass because I figure I'll just drop it off there. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> since I'm gonna <laughs> be cool. there instead of mailing it, uh, because I think it's June first. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's is coming right date. up. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like h- trying to finish that before we go. Mm-hmm. So I've been doing like one of those a day because mm-hmm. holy shit, you make no money off those things. Oh, I know. <laughs> uh, that, so. Yeah, that's the whole, the show. Mm. I don't know if they're doing it the same way this way, but when I did it, um, you had to price it at 60 bucks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you have to price it at 60 bucks. So if anyone's looking for an original piece, that's the time to get it if you're <laughs> if you're like trying to crunch some money. Get oh, for the sure, yeah. most bang for your buck. Mm-hmm. I mean, not only mine, but I mean, I went there last year for while we were there to check out the the location. Yeah, and it was like a like so much good work. Oh, and you're like God damn. I mean, I assume most of it like sells out really quickly. The coaster show was up when you went. Or? Yeah. Oh, okay. Nice. So yeah, so just a heads up. Keep an eye out for anyone trying to buy. I'm going to try to buy something this <laughs> yeah. year. See <laughs> Might if, as well. At least see how fast it goes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Other than that, I've just been. This week has been fucking crazy for me. <laughs> really? Because I also had the digital that digital class. Oh, you did that this week? Yeah. Oh shit! <laughs> so, <laughs> How'd that go? It was all right. Uh-huh. I, I think the like the I just videotaped myself painting something and then just pretty much podcasted over it i feel okay. like <laughs> yeah. roughly around like uh, the topic uh-huh. um so i don't know i don't know if people are gonna hate that i like it but i think it. the people who would buy it would like it <laughs> all right cool thanks sir Jim. <laughs> yeah. so i i i painted and recorded and then recorded the audio all this week was it a um, painting that you did specifically for that? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I haven't been posting anything about it. Mm, okay. I can show you afterwards. Yeah, yeah. You think. It's not the greatest thing, but, <laughs> you know, it is what it is. <laughs> um, How did you like painting on the coaster, though? I haven't minded it so far. Why did you not like it? Um, well, it's not good for water media, I think. Mm, so that's yeah. why uh, I was wondering if you had any issue with it being oil. No, well, I gessoed the the, the coaster. Yeah, I, I did like three layers of gesso, and okay. I sealed the edges with gesso. So it's like painting oil on paper, basically. Yeah, mm. yeah, it wasn't too bad. I mean, it's not my favorite for sure. Yeah, and it's a bitch how the size of it. I mean, fucking, I don't know. Hmm. Like, I wish it was even like a, an inch bigger. I would be stoked. Yeah, you know? and but it's it's also like that's one of those things where. This is like a show where I make no money. I make a very little bit of money off of it if I sell all four pieces. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like trying to weigh your pros. Like, it's like, how many hours can I 
spend on this mm-hmm. to like really kind of maximize the little bit of money I'm going to get from it. Mm-hmm. So that's my whole mentality going into it. It's like some things I'm like, I like critique it and I'm like, who cares? Like, you know, like I'm not going to make that much money off of it. <laughs> so like people are getting to get a bargain. I'm not, I'm not trying to like, I'm not saying it's shitty what I'm doing. It's just, you have, it's like one of those things where you just have to weigh your pros and cons of how much you're willing to put into something. Oh yeah, definitely. Worth that much. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, other than that. I don't know what else I've been doing. Just a lot of mural, like, planning shit. Mm, okay. Especially so how many do you have lined up then? Um, three, you said? We have four. Oh, okay. Four different murals lined up. And we're always, like, working out things for potential future ones. You know, like, people, like, are, like, nibbling, but they don't fully bite yet. Mm-hmm. Type deals. Uh, and, yeah, it's just... It's just a fun little like avenue. I mean, have people been reaching out to you directly, or uh, uh, like, for murals? For murals, yeah. Uh, a little bit. MJ's got it more than I have, actually. Mm. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Actually, I don't think I've gotten it. Period. MJ gets them like way more than I do. Hmm. Uh, and she's also like the go getter when it comes to like trying to find murals. Mm-hmm. I just, I just sit on my tablet and like design for future murals. So I'm like designing potential things that would be fun to do on a wall and Mm -hmm. then uh it's which is also like a benefit because mj has to like sometimes submit designs so uh, i don't know this shit boring as hell (laughs) i don't think so i don't know i'm asking (laughs) uh but yeah yeah it's it's been whatever uh have you seen anything interesting have i seen anything interesting um in this lockdown time is there do you even watch more shit now that you're locked down or no no <laughs> well you're just like the same. doing the same shit right <laughs> yeah basically yeah uh let me think did we watch anything i'm trying to think if uh vanessa and i watched anything but not really no not that i could think of nice <laughs> <laughs> uh let's see yeah there was there was like an ollie sunny episode <laughs> it's like the only thing i've, I've watched or- no it wasn't even a new one it was some episode that um, that Juan reminded us of because mm. it was an episode of where they go to a, like a, a trendy bar mm-hmm. and they like oh, try right, and copy right. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was like uh, where he says like I I uh, I come or something like that. Like oh yeah, I, I blow loads or something. <laughs> something like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the, a good episode. The banter, yeah. <laughs> uh, so. So have you been uh, keeping track with uh, the the most important thing that happened this week? Keeping track with the most important thing. Uh, Takashi Six Nine got released. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, I just heard people talk about it, but I mean, I never gave a fuck about him the in the first place. The streets, but. the streets are talking. <laughs> the streets are talking, Sergio. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, uh, I know, I know. I live in the mean streets of Santa Rosa, so I know. Uh, you know. Codes, those are broke. Yeah. And so, you know, here's a question. Uh, if uh, me and you, if people find out that, you know, our little racketeering thing we do while we're podcasting, uh, you know, how podcasting is a front for our money laundering thing <laughs> and our gunslinging. Yeah. Um, are you snitching, Sergio? Uh, what's What's being put on the table? <laughs> Uh, well, he did, I think, like 20 months or some shit like that. <laughs> or, like, uh, I think he had something crazy, like 20 years or some shit like that. Right. Are you snitching on me, Sergio? <laughs> <laughs> this has been waiting to drive. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, here's a question. What if, 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 uh, what is the, the least amount of time? you would be willing to do in prison to not get it reduced for snitching on me for our racketeering. And I assume all of our listeners aren't going to talk about this, obviously, because the streets, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. <laughs> the least amount of time? I, yeah. If I they're like, hey, you Sergio, you have to do a year in prison or tell us things about Josh. Are you doing a year in prison, Sergio? 
on the record, yes. <laughs> <laughs> What's the? I'm not built for for the streets. Wait, I'm you sorry, are guys. snitching. That's the record. You're saying on the record you are snitching. <laughs> on the record, I'm doing a year. <laughs> oh, you're doing a year rather than snitching. That's what I mean. Mm-hmm. Okay, nice respect. <laughs> respect. <laughs> Uh, so, so what's what what's the um, what's the maximum amount of time that Sergio is willing to do? You know, obviously you're going to come out with you know like raindrop tattoos on your eye, teardrop tattoos on your eyes, and uh, you know you're going to have to join a gang and probably become the leader at some point. Um, uh, most amount of time, yeah. Um, uh, a year. <laughs> Just, I'm I feel going like, to jail for a year or, no, or not. I feel like Sergio, a year of Sergio in prison, I would call you and be like, hey, Sergio, what are you up to? You're like, same old thing I always do. Just, <laughs> just painting. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> Still doing paint drips. <laughs> yeah, just doing paintings and um, yeah. working on my online course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh uh, fuck! Uh, all right. <laughs> Funny enough, I have a lot of a lot more free time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good to know. Well, now I know <laughs> that like I can only do crimes that will only give us a year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with you, <laughs> right? <laughs> Anything above that, I'm like, ah, oh, sorry, Serge, you got to find someone else to do this one with. <laughs> right. <laughs> one Moving my, your racketeering one business else. Crime activities. <laughs> yeah. Uh. I don't even remember what is racketeering exactly. I think it was he got recoed for like uh, whatever gang he was in, mm-hmm. which means that whatever they did, he did. So first, okay. I think he got he hired someone to kill someone. Oh right, so I believe that's I did like hear about that. I think that gets charged as attempted murder or some shit. And I think there was drug or gun trafficking. Mm-hmm. And and I think there was other attempted murders that were associated with their group. Um, but racketeering, that has to do with, like, organized crime, right? I'm trying to remember exactly what that is. Yeah. Yeah, I believe so. hmm Yeah. I don't know. I think it... Does it have anything to do with money laundering? I mean, I should just... I have no idea. Google this shit. Go Google that shit. Uh, so he's free, so... So you can look forward to listening to those those songs again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God, I, I hate celebrity shit like that. Like, um, okay, I I understand what it is now. Mm. So when you go up to a business and you're like, pay us for protection, mm. that kind of thing. Mm, muscle. Muscle, yeah. Well, c- causing that problem. That makes you need muscle. Right. It's the racketeering part like of it. Someone broke your windows three weeks in a row. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you might want to pay us so they stop because right. we're protecting them. Like, You're just doing it. Mm-hmm. We have cameras. <laughs> uh, the doing it is the racketeering. Mm. That's good to know. <laughs> in case I need to, you know, racketeer some stuff. <laughs> you want it back into your <laughs> studio, Sergio? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, huh. That's interesting. Are you big into mafia movies? I like them, but I'm not like, I mean, are there that many mafia movies these days? Like Goodfellas is still one of my favorite movies. Yeah. And uh, Casino I like a lot. And like, I mean, I I liked, um, what's it called? The Sopranos? Uh, uh Gobble st- I still need to watch that. I should watch that. One. I just watched it recently. <laughs> did I talk about that? I think you did. So. Yeah, you talked about how uh, you and MJ would say Gumar. <laughs> <laughs> My Gumar. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think I liked The Irishman way more than you did. Oh, uh, yeah, The Irishman. Oh, you liked that movie? Did I talk a lot of shit about that movie? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I hated it. So yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, there's there's other mob movies I like. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Teal. I guess you can like bad mafia movies if you want, Sergio. No judgment here. <laughs> well, I was gonna say Gotti was my favorite movie. <laughs> I don't even know. Oh, is that the John, John Travolta? Travolta? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God damn! You ever seen like his Instagram? 
I've heard about it, but uh, no, I haven't actually looked at it. That is so fucking funny. <laughs> Celebrities are a weird fucking thing. I swear to God, that whole like world is just something I never want to be a part of. <laughs> But it'd be nice if some celebrities bought my art and then promoted it. <laughs> right. <That'd be> awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, it's one of those funny things where you can see like a celebrity, uh, you know, like if there's like an art documentary, right? And then there's like a celebrity there who's like, oh, blah, blah, this artist is a genius. All mm-hmm. of a sudden, people are like, well, he must be a genius because this person who knows how to act <laughs> is uh, telling us so. And you're like... What the fuck? How do they know? Like, what, what do they know about artwork? <laughs> right, I mean, yeah, it's it, I don't know. It's one of those funny uh, uh, things because I could I feel like I could see people being like they're a genius, you know. Like you hear it a lot with like mm-hmm. Banksy, the, oh, yeah. the artist. Go like, oh yeah, like Banksy, that man's a genius, and mm-hmm. you're like, oh wait, see, tell me more about art. You know? <laughs> right, yeah. you know, other than <laughs> you're a bit of a hype chaser. Um, <laughs> Yeah. That w- what if um, what if like Martin Shkreli bought your paintings and people found out? What would your reaction be? I'd be like, cool. He <laughs> bought some work. I mean, <laughs> I didn't think I didn't think any less of Wu Tang after he bought that shit. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but I just mean like, would would there be any sort of like, would you have to put out like something like? On your Instagram, be like, "Hey, I like, don't support his." <laughs> yeah, they can go fuck. I don't give a fuck about <laughs> people's opinions. Yeah, uh, I was just curious about how you would handle that. If you- I would say, "Cool." <laughs> I don't. I would write, "Cool." Made that money. Didn't think less of Wu Tang when they when he bought their shit. <laughs> yeah. And then put put the W emoji up, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then write Wu Tang is for the children, and people are like, "Josh got a point." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, dude, one of the things I've I've noticed back to the celebrity thing, one of the things I've noticed is like how maybe untalented celebrities are mm-hmm. in real, like because of this whole like this whole thingy, oh, and, sure. and having to like kind of see celebrities. I don't know, like paw for attention. Yeah. There's like this weird thing where like every celebrity is like, remember who I am. Yeah. Like I'm still here. And you're like, I don't care. Like, <laughs> But there's like this weird, there's like this, when you remove like the machine of Hollywood, like thinking about like all of the talent that has to go into making a movie or whatever Mm -hmm. from like set designers, costume designers, all of these like really, really fucking talented people, Mm -hmm. the people that are like the cinematographers and all those folks. When you remove all of those and you only have the celebrity, you're like, this person's (laughs) kind of fucking talentless. Like, (laughs) right. Like they're just kind of thing. They're good at. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, it's like, Oh, you just put a normal camera in front of them (laughs) and then they make a YouTube fucking star look like a genius. (laughs) You know, it's like, (laughs) you have no personality. You're (laughs) fucking disconnected from the rest of humanity. (laughs) You have to be told what to say. You have to, you have to have a script in order to, for us to be like, that man's a genius. And then they get to go and say like, Bengsky, well, he's fucking, you know, he's a genius. You you see this celebrity, at least for me, it's like, holy shit. I hope all those other people that make this celebrity look amazing, get a fucking pay bump after this. Cause holy (laughs) shit, (laughs) they're the real star. (laughs) All these other fucking celebrities ain't shit. Hmm. They're just a, a little like figurine in this, in this entire like dollhouse that, makes it look cool so for everybody who's been trying to adapt their talents to like do something for the quarantine has anybody tried to do like reciting shakespeare on instagram live or anything like that to try and show off their talents not that i know of. Hmm. i just randomly will see i don't know it's like anytime I, I don't even watch i don't even have tv but like you'll catch something on youtube or mm-hmm. like the SNL thing, you know, you know about the SNL thing where like everyone's oh, yeah, doing yeah. The mm-hmm. SNL they did at it home. Through, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you're like, wow, this shit is really not funny. It's so weird. Like I caught a little bit of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because yeah, Vanessa's mom was watching it on TV and I mm-hmm. caught a glimpse 
of some of it and they were trying to do like the weekend update mm-hmm. and that was probably like the most successful part right. of it because they were just trying to make each other laugh the whole time right plus the weekend but, update is just two people sitting there right. saying like one-liners <laughs> right where like the other stuff is like based around like a whole like <laughs> scene you know right so when you remove that and they're just guys in their house doing it you're like this is yeah. kind of bad <laughs> the audience laugh does a lot of trickery mm, yeah, yeah for <laughs> sure i mean that's always a <laughs> yeah a weird thing but yeah i just never experienced snl that way it's so strange yeah it makes me look at everything <laughs> like once you kind of pull away the curtain you realize like god damn I don't know if I respect any of these people anymore. Almost <laughs> to the point where, like, any time I see a celebrity now <laughs> in any facet, I'm like, you're fucking talentless. <laughs> like, you literally need a machine, a huge machine to make you look good. Mm-hmm. You're, you know, it makes you realize how talented YouTube people are, how talented you know, set designers, costume designers, artists like us, you know, who don't need a fucking a million dollar machine to make their shit look great. It's just a human being doing art Mm -hmm. where these people, they really need, and maybe there's something special about like the whole machine thing, but it, everyone values that one celebrity more than the actual, you know, all the other effort. No one thinks of like, like no one can name a goddamn costume designer. (laughs) You know, no one can name, I don't know, the lighting fucking people. It's like all these people that make this shit actually possible. Right. No one gives a fuck about, but holy fuck, they're amazing. (laughs) To make that fucking piece of shit shine so bright. (laughs) There's a lot of polishing Hmm. goes into that. Uh, But yeah, that was was a little rant. (laughs) I've been (laughs) yelling that at MJ for like... (laughs) This last week, I feel like, God damn, every time they all want to do benefits and shit, which is like, fine, raise that money, whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there's a ton of people that need it, but God damn, it's like, I don't know. There's something so annoying <laughs> about seeing these celebrities at home. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't know if I follow any celebrities on Instagram or Facebook, so uh, I, I missed it somehow. I follow one, and it's only because she follows me. <laughs> And uh, it's like Shannon something. Doherty? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Uh, what from, is she on? From uh, Beverly Hills 90210. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, let me see. But um, it was funny because she went live and um, I was like, oh, let me click. Or I didn't even know it was her. I just clicked on who was live just to see what was on. And it was her and she was talking about like astrology and like all this shit. And, oh, like no. It was like four minutes and I was like, Oh my god, it's the worst. I can't find. I don't. I don't know if her name is actually Shannon. It's the lady from. I don't know what the fuck she's from. Um, <laughs> uh, I've seen her a lot in movies. I actually don't mind her as an actress. She's on that Reese Witherspoon uh, HBO show. What's that called? Shailene Woodley. Oh, okay. I've heard that name. I don't know what she looks like. That's her name. What I say, Shannon. You know how good I am with names. Uh, yeah, there it is. Shailene Woodley. And okay. she, um, yeah, and we're watching her on uh, Instagram Live was tough. Like, oof. Looking at her picture, she looks like somebody who would be into astrology. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, just not for me. I mean, there's plenty of people I know that are, into that kind of stuff. I feel like MJ secretly it does. You know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, when you first met her, wasn't she doing like uh, portraits of celebrities on Instagram? MJ? Yeah. I like, don't think so. Or no, they weren't. They were like famous models or something oh, like that. Oh, yeah. I mean, so was I. <laughs> I wasn't shooting my own reference shots at the time. So I was just like finding images. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so I can't judge her for that. <laughs> um. But yeah. But from what I remember, you told her to stop doing that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I well I just I hated it. Whenever anyone was like, "Is this this person?" I'm like, "Uh, yes." Oh. I didn't mean. I didn't want anyone to know that. <laughs> oh, okay. I just. Uh, <laughs> it's like I, oh, but yeah, she used to like. She used to like tag, paint them yeah. and then at them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> But I feel like that was like early Instagram where that worked and that got you a lot of followers. Mm. 
Yeah, I did that like a long, long time ago before I even had Instagram. Mm. And then I got over it really fast. Like at shows when people would say that, be like, oh, okay. Stop doing this. And then, uh, and then I started following photographers instead. That was way better. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Did you draw from those pictures? Then? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I would draw from like f- these like Flickr photographers. Oh, okay. And I would be like, "Hey, can I use this?" And they'd be like, "Sure." And I'd be like, "Cool, <laughs> nice." And then I would paint it. There was like mainly a few. Ha- there was like a handful of them that I really liked. Oh, okay. Uh, so if you're trying to look for reference and you don't want to shoot models or don't want to pay for <laughs> it or whatever, then hop on that flicker because they have like large images oh yeah like, that's true like full size images so you can really get detailed if you want to mm-hmm. uh and just whatever, practice <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh but yeah be a josh <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah be me <laughs> so what else is up uh let's see i mean yeah just you know the paint drip stuff is still doing pretty well that's been fun to do it's kind of a, uh, like we were kind of talking about this before, like the whole like still life, seeing it as like a, almost like a trend sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's been interesting to like just paint things that are like, they don't have like a lot of special meaning to me other than just being like things that I find interesting to paint at the moment. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's kind of changed a little bit of how I even think about like, studying or you know just like the whole practice of painting from life like no matter what it is there's some value in it Mm -hmm. and the tricky thing is just finding something that i think will be interesting to me and like interesting enough for somebody else to want to like collect it Mm -hmm. so it's partly a little bit of like a game of myself trying to figure out like what where's that intersection like what will i like to paint and what would people like to see right yeah. Yeah, I mean it's not my that's not my mentality at all, but I get mm-hmm. it. I don't I mean I just I'm not a still life <laughs> person <laughs> at all. I mean, like collecting it or um painting it. Yeah, I mean like the Zoe Frank lady, I think she's mm-hmm. fucking awesome. And yeah. like I don't mind when people paint like dead animals. I don't know <laughs> if that's considered still life. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So I don't mind that. <laughs> um I've been. I listened to a few different episodes of her on podcast, and mm-hmm. it was kind of interesting to hear her talk about. It. Like she doesn't really even think about that much about, at least like what she was talking about. It's not even that much about the subject. It's about adapting all these like different concepts that she's thought about, both mm-hmm. tradi- um like old school Renaissance things and like. N- newer modernist things and putting it together in a in a painting right it's pretty interesting to hear her talk about that i have heard her on one and i know she just did artist decoded mm-hmm. so i plan on listening to it but uh yeah yeah i mean that's awesome i mm-hmm. like when people have intent behind what they do mm-hmm. so that's cool mm-hmm. uh and i mean i feel like it reads whenever you see someone doing something that like re- at least for me that really speaks to me it, it's like I always feel like there's some intention behind it. You know, there's some like direction they're either trying to get to or they're like really focused on and they're just kind of going that way. For sure. And yeah. So, so yeah, I can see that totally with her work. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but yeah, yeah, that's cool. I, uh, I know you've been doing a lot of like single objects. You plan at some point of like adding more to like the image to like. Because I feel like it might change the way the composition is. Um, yeah, the- eventually. I feel like I'm still just in that mode of figuring out the mediums. Mm-hmm. So there's still a lot more to do, just like just keeping it simple mm-hmm. for now. Um, but yeah, probably eventually. I mean, who knows how it'll evolve? I'm just I'm just letting it be what it is for now. Yeah. Um, when you're painting them, do you are you just trying to paint like as as like um as like you know like obviously you're painting from life Mm -hmm. so you're just trying to get it as close to the the thing as possible yeah for the most part the actual like rendering of things Mm -hmm. yeah um yeah i'd say so just putting maybe a little bit of like design here and there into it but um yeah for the most part 
You ever think about putting like mood or something into it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've thought about um, different lighting situations and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like the um, one of the the latest McChicken paintings I did Mm -hmm. (laughs) was uh, I I like side lit it, Mm -hmm. so it gives this weird like creepy like sickly feeling to it, Mm -hmm. (laughs) which is like I mean McChickens. Sorry, guys, McChickens are. Gross. (laughs) Gross. <laughs> but, do, do you? Uh, so I wanted to capture that grossness. <laughs> uh, what do you think? Uh, like twenty-five-year-old Sergio would think if he heard you say, "And on the most recent McChicken painting." <laughs> <laughs> Actually, when I was that age, I probably saw myself doing more of that kind of thing anyway. <laughs> mm, for sure. Because, uh, like in in school and all that, I. I was more into doing like the just, you know, objects and just whatever was around to paint or draw. Right. right. So um, that actually makes a lot of sense to me. <laughs> 25 year old me would not be surprised, <laughs> actually. <laughs> He'd be like, still? <laughs> yeah. Uh, he would probably hope that I was making more money off of it. But <laughs> right. uh, don't we all? <laughs> That's why racketeering is going <laughs> right. to join some of the activities we do soon. <laughs> uh, that's cool. Yeah. So you've been enjoying that? Yeah, it actually, I actually have. Um, it's been kind of like a little deal with myself I've made. Like if I'm going to buy all this junk food and shit, I got to <laughs> do something productive with it. Right. Uh, yeah, just the whole like quarantine things and kind of like there's certain things that have you been uh, eating a lot of like junk food at, while in quarantine? Probably. Well, I don't know. It's hard to say if I would say more than mm. usual. Mm-hmm. Like I pro, I pro. Well, I go out less to eat like fast food, mm-hmm. but then I probably bring in more <laughs> like candy and shit like that. I see. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, should we try to knock out some of these questions? Sure. I'm sure we'll be able to kill some time with that shit. For sure. And at least let the questions breathe a little bit. So Mm -hmm. we're not trying to like knock them out really fast. Mm -hmm. Um, Let's see. Welcome to the audience question corner. (laughs) Yeah. I don't have the, I have the Sergio question corner, but not audience question corner. Um, Okay, well, this is relevant to you. <laughs> How do you deal with spending 40-plus hours a week working at less than mediocre job when you know deep down you should be using that time and energy to paint and draw? Ugh. That's a question I struggle with. I may be projecting the less than mediocre bit. If you guys have any thoughts about this, I would love to hear what you have to say. <laughs> and that was Mario J. Dana. Well, mm. we found out your solution. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean... <laughs> I don't, well, you have to pay your bills at the end of the day. So you have to have a strategy. Right. I mean, even if you want to spend, I don't know, 40 hours painting, Mm -hmm. you have to have some like reasonable way of going about doing that um, and still living, in my opinion. So either you can, there's multiple ways you can do that. You can marry a rich old man. You know, you can, you know, live at home with your parents. You can sell your body for money. You can sell your blood for money. <laughs> I'm sure there's a shitload of different ways to make money. Uh, you know, a lot of people, they do like server jobs. Oh, yeah. Because there's like decent, or bartender, mm-hmm. because it's like low hours. Um, potential high. Po- yeah, potential high money mm-hmm. if you're good at it. So. Mm-hmm. Everyone gets their own, got, has their own hustles. Monty bought a fucking ranch in Arizona. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. uh, you just got to keep, if, you, if you're trying to get out of that shit, you have to like really, really, really start strategizing. Right. Um, and I mean, <clears throat> and then understand that once you're free of that job, you have different burdens as in mm-hmm. you're going to have to start making enough money off of your art to be able to live right so you you're trading one burden in for another so you have to be prepared for that and feel comfortable and like where you're going at least Mm -hmm. in art to take that leap so if you're not making too much money and you're hoping to you know quit your day job then uh start figuring out the business end of art yep and and while working on your craft as hard as you can but 
I mean, at some point it takes, it takes like, you have to take a risk at some point. I mean, mm -hmm. right now my job is fucking furious with me. <laughs> um, but I don't give a fuck. I mean, to be honest, it's not even just because of art. It's, it's cause I, I don't trust that they'll ha handle this shit correctly. And I'm not, mm. I don't trust that the fucking government will handle this fucking issue correctly. So yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> that's my big issue. Mm. Um, but, um, but other than that, I mean, it, it presented an opportunity that I've kind of wanted for a long time. Mm. Uh, and, uh, I'm going to take that risk and hopefully it pays off. If not, uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but I mean, I don't know. No one gets anywhere without risking shit at the end of the day. Um, you have to fucking, you have to risk something to like gain this thing that you want. Mm -hmm. Um, and comfort a lot of times is that. When you talk about your job not handling things correctly, you mean like compensation or safety? or I think that they think they're safe, but I, I know the people that work there, uh -oh. and it's it's bullshit. Oh, okay. it's, like, it's like a veil of safety, hmm. a bullshit veil of safety. Interesting. Uh, but yeah, I mean, MJ's extremely furious. That's the truth about it. She, she With well, her job? Or? No, with oh. my job, because oh. she, she had... Um, you know, we had uh, fires years ago or yeah. a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and I went back to work like three days after the fire, and that place was still on fire. <laughs> That's ridiculous. You know? and, what the fuck? Three days afterwards? Yeah. And they, like, we weren't even like allowed to go back. No. To, the <laughs> Army Reserve was literally blocking the streets off, and we got special permission to go up there. Wow. As who the fuck am I to be dealing with this shit? <laughs> right. Of, you know what I mean? And And we did, and it was like a thing that wasn't rewarded. You know, the the mm. managers pat themselves on the back, but everyone that was there doing all the shit work mm -hmm. kind of was like, all right, well, now that, you know, you guys were here for three months while the majority of the company was on paid vacation for three months. Mm -hmm. All right, well, everyone's back, so get back to work. And you're like, cool. So no, you welcome or no, thank you. There's no like reimbursement for the fact that everyone stayed home for three months, not working. And we work so you maybe pay us like a bonus or some shit you know but it's like i don't know what health issues that might have might have arisen from breathing and all that shit yeah but it's like they pretend it's all safe hmm. yada 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 but it's like at the end of the day it's bullshit so my wife's like nope say you're not going back and i was like all right <laughs> i'll say i'm not going back yeah. um wow. and we'll see if we can uh leverage this time into going full-time art uh well, it sounds like you guys got a plan. So yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe a little earlier than you. Yeah, go yeah. for ideally, but it's like you're saying, take that risk. Yeah, take that risk. I don't know if you know when this moment will present itself again. Mm -hmm. uh, the ability to file for unemployment. Right. Our our idea was we need to make enough money to quit because you know we. Uh, pr I don't think I can get fired even if I wanted to. So. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So. Um, so this moment presented itself where I didn't get fired, but uh, something weird happened in the world, and <laughs> right. I somehow have an unemployment. So <laughs> that's awesome. I'm going to try to take advantage of it. Uh, so the whole idea with the unemployment thing—that's like a temporary thing, or is that like that's a for you? You're done for good with that place. I have no idea. Mm, just uh, don't even know yet. No, I'm kind of like playing it by ear right now i, I think we're trying to figure out if this is doable mm -hmm. my wife has tossed out the idea of potentially having me just see if i can stay on it uh while she maybe goes back to work and seeing how that is mm, um, okay but yeah. we're not sure yet uh it seems like a, an option yeah yeah so we're still figuring it out but it'd be awesome if it did happen you know um i've been working harder than i have since i've been working like just in general not even yeah. like working harder at my art but just working harder period huh. since i've been off work hmm. uh so and i've just had way more energy i've literally been up like like from like two to the two in the two to four in the morning like almost every day 
Um, when do you wake up? Nine. Oh, wow. Roughly like nine, nine thirty, <laughs> almost every day. Damn. I uh, wish I could do that and not run myself into the ground. <clears throat> and I'm just working nonstop the whole time. Hmm. And I fucking enjoy the shit out of it. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's awesome. one of those things where you realize how much you hate your job. <laughs> That's one of the things I'm most interested in is after this shit all ends, how many people during this time are going to realize how much they hate their job? <laughs> yeah. No be kidding. like, uh, I'm not going back to that. I'm going to go find something I want to do. Mm. I remember listening to a podcast. I don't know if we've talked about this before, but where they talk about how a lot of people during the 2008 uh, economic collapse, mm-hmm. how a lot of people then pursued their passion. Oh, uh-huh. And then after that, now they're just doing their passion as a career and they're making good money. Mm-hmm. And I remember listening to this podcast and just noticing how many creatives kind of went that route during that time. Mm -hmm. And I was like, huh, that's interesting. I wonder if, and I've been kind of waiting for a financial crash to see if there's potential wiggle room within that realm to figure out if I can pursue my, my goals. Um, And uh, this happened. So, Mm-hmm. In my head, it's like, this might be a moment where, you know, four years from now, I'm like, okay, I, I remember when I worked that job four years ago, <laughs> yeah. it's like, fuck, I should have done the jump earlier. Mm, um, maybe. So, yeah. So, it, it, it's cool. I'm, uh, but yeah, I, uh, what was his name? Mario? Uh, yeah. Good luck, Mario. I mean, <laughs> uh, get your, I would say work as hard as you can at getting where you're really comfortable at your work and at your artwork and, um, and learn the business side. Yeah. Yeah. Just pick up relevant skills while you can right now, I'd say. Cause I've been, all the stuff that I've been doing for like the course is all stuff I learned on my own Mm -hmm. over the years. And it's helping me now because I don't have to pay anybody to do that stuff for me. Right. I mean, it's taking up a lot of time, but right now, I mean, nobody's, there's hardly any, shows in the horizon right now like stuff keeps getting bumped back anyway so yeah i'm just taking advantage of that time in that way where i'm just trying to build something up for myself that's completely mine and hopefully makes me um more money than just relying either on galleries or or just doing small paintings that i can sell here and there right and just really working on figuring out like the business aspect of things. Cause um, it's putting into practice a lot of things that I've heard about before. Like right now I'm basically going like the traditional quote unquote, uh, online marketer route. Mm-hmm. Cause I feel like I want to know how these people do it before right. I try and like do it my own way. So mm-hmm. I'm just totally going in the whole like salesy route for this whole thing just to figure it out and be like, okay, let me just make it something I like to do a little bit more once I actually know how to do it. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's a de- hold. I mean, goddamn, back to this whole environment, the marketing going on right now. I will mm-hmm. have Hulu. That's like the one thing where <laughs> yeah. I have to, I'm forced to watch commercials. Yeah. Oh my God. The marketing is so mm. shit. Uh, it's like everyone's trying to remind us that we're in the <laughs> fucking this time of coronavirus and everyone's being like, we're doing, you know, like we know that you, <laughs> yeah. blah, 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 and we, we're doing this because we're great people. And right. like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. And it's so transparent. It's like, you're yeah. honestly, some marketing team came up with that for you. And it's not even good. <laughs> yeah. It's the most dumbest marketing period (laughs) it's like let's make sure you remember this shitty time and also (laughs) do you want to buy a car (laughs) right yeah it's like no what the fuck uh but yeah yeah it's become so cliche that there's something i shared in my stories i think last week it was like 10 different types of corona marketing and Uh, it's uh, (laughs) like yeah it's like all the cliches like there's the people who who like are the the we care type posts, and then oh, there's right. there's the like there's also like the people who basically carry on like nothing's happening, mm. and then there's you know this bunch of different ones too. But yeah, they're they're all pretty spot on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're all we're all just human beings. We're all fucking <laughs> think we're unique um, butterflies, but at yeah. the end of the day, we all kind of have like a certain way of dealing with shit that like falls into certain camps. 
Pretty much, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I guess business is all falling into that camp, too. Yeah, I mean, fucking marketing is so shit sometimes. <laughs> I mean, I think everyone's brain is so wonky, they all have no idea how to deal with this. Because, mm-hmm. like, they don't want to make it funny. <laughs> and they don't want to, so you, like, lose humor as, like, an, a potential uh, way of marketing. Mm. So they're all going, they're like, we're good people, pat us on the back. Right. Um, I don't know. What else we got? Uh, let's see. Nope, that is somebody spamming. <laughs> uh, what Brand- did it say? It said follow us this- for the best podcast on success. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I thought it said click here to see nude pics. <laughs> yeah. uh, Brand is- Brandon Grace Fine Arts respond to your question sticker. How do you guys feel about the oversaturation of art because of the Q word? I mean, I don't see a difference Quentin? really. Yeah, no, I don't see a difference. Yeah. Uh, like quarantine related art i mean i don't even know if i see much difference in like the type of art being yeah done i've seen either i've definitely seen some face mask art that's the main thing i've oh, seen <laughs> yeah i mean uh, i did paint a toilet paper roll oh, for, yeah. <laughs> but uh it did well so people seem to <laughs> like it I I've, I haven't done shit quarantine related <laughs> i didn't even do it for the quarantine it was because of uh it was a white object challenge. <laughs> mm, for sure. <laughs> uh, uh, but, but, yeah, I don't know. I don't see much of a difference. Like, I'm still following all the same people, and they're yeah. pretty much posting all about the same amount. Yeah. The only difference is sometimes it's, like, some sort of charity-related. That's that's thing. the shit that I don't really – I'm not really into. Mm-hmm. I mean, me personally, I just don't really care mm-hmm. too much about, like – I mean, I – Maybe that's the wrong word. I I don't, I'm not that big into when people are like, tell me how to like do things or like how I should feel me in general. I'm like, I feel like anytime someone's like, you mean like you should give to this cause, for example, Yeah, or or like anytime someone tells me that they're giving to a cause, I'm like, I just give to it. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, I don't like, don't tell me just give to it like <laughs> the fuck are you telling me for like like you don't need the virtue signaling yeah i don't it. need any of that shit i don't need you it's like anytime there's like a a celebrity doing some shit and there's a photo of it it's like who took that picture <laughs> right yeah yeah it's like what the fuck like maybe just do it i mean i know there's people that just do charity shit you know but i think it's all about kind of like just doing it and not having to promote on your social media how, how that you did it. I mean, you do whatever the fuck you want, but I just go, skim right past it. Mm. I'm just like, all right, next thing. I'm not like furious at seeing it. I just don't really care. I think celebrities also have this inflated sense of self-importance that they truly believe that, oh, if I do this, I will influence people to do it as well. Right. So the whole like platform yeah. conversation. <laughs> uh and it, I feel like there's maybe there's that's true and but I don't really care. I'm sure it's also the opposite to some people. Too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's the same, yeah. They can as many less. people will will be turned off by it. Like Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah. But as far as art, I feel like everyone's just kind of doing their thing. Right. Uh, in general, um, uh, I know I've been, I I feel like I haven't paint, posted shit, uh, like barely anything since the quarantine, but I've been working on things. I just, yeah, you've been active on your story. So yeah. But even then it's been barely anything, hmm. uh, like those like two, compared to how much you've actually put out or how like, much you've actually created. Yeah. No, oh, interesting. Uh, I'm just, but a lot of it's like digital stuff for like mural stuff. Oh, okay. So I'm not going to post that. And right. Then, right. You know, I mean, I just don't, I don't know. Uh, to be honest, I, I feel like I'm on Instagram and that shit way less than I used to be mm-hmm. because at my job, I would just be bored waiting for something and I would like look at Instagram or something like that. Yeah, so yeah. now I'm like, uh, I like look at my like time on Instagram and it's like, uh, it's so much less, maybe a quarter of the amount of time. That really? Used to be. Wow. Huh. It's like, I don't, yeah. And I mean, that's great for me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah. I, Do you I, uh, respond to people less then, or no? I mean, you get like your comments. You just yeah, yeah. go on the fucking most recent post or whatever. Right? And, Is that what you, you know, mainly do these days? Yeah, I just go post. I'll look through a couple things really quickly, and then be like, "All right, I'm done for the day." Mm-hmm. 
you know, uh, rather than at work where you're like looking at it and you're like, I'll, right. I'll take lunch yeah. and I'm like looking through Instagram, like sure. board or whatever, or break or whatever. It's like, mm-hmm. it's just, it seems like it's way more time, uh, on Instagram at work. Mm. I don't know if anyone ever at work listens to this, but mm-hmm. this is just a joke. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I don't notice it at all. How many people at your work know about your podcast? I don't know. A handful, but I don't think anyone's ever told me they listened to it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe like three people. Mm. Mm. If that, maybe not even that. Mm. Uh, more of my old coworkers do, but. I see. Uh, I very little, I talked to very little people at my job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, God, it's that place is miserable. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not even the work. It's like the people there. It's not even the work or the people there. It's just knowing that I'm wasting my time there. Oh, okay. Do you know what I mean? That it's, makes sense. It's that yeah. Of like being there and being like, this is a waste of my goddamn time. Sure. Uh, and it's a time suck. And I don't know. It, it, it's also like a uh, Groundhog Day effect there. Mm hmm. You know, you can go there, and then all of a sudden you're like, I've been here for five years. You're like, fuck, that was that time flew by. And I just did nothing for <laughs> eight hours. Like, nothing that I think is worth anything. You know? <laughs> yeah. And it's so repetitive. You're mm, just, like, doing no, the it? same thing over and over. Damn. I mean, it's that not like... It sucks. Yeah. <laughs> it's just horrible. It's like... I mean, there's some things you do, like, once every three months, you know? And then you're like... You're like, the thing goes, shows up, and you're like, I'm pretty sure I did that last week. And then you realize, like, no, that was three months ago. And you're like, fuck, time here is just bullshit. <laughs> it just doesn't exist. Like, wow. Uh, yeah, it's miserable. And everyone talks about it, too. That's the weird thing. Everyone's like, yeah, it's like fucking Groundhog's Day here. Hmm. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, so fuck that plan. It's <laughs> uh, funny. I think this is the most you've ever actually talked about the work, uh, yeah, <laughs> the, probably, the actual yeah. job. <laughs> uh, freedom, you know what I mean? <laughs> as little as it may be and as maybe short as it may be. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, but, uh, what were we talking about? Uh, just about oversaturation of art. Oh uh, Yeah. I don't know. I don't see a difference. So no, I don't. But I'm <laughs> the only not. difference, like people who are doing plain air, are doing more still lifes. And now there's now that some of the restrictions yeah. have been eased, people starting. I'm st- starting to see more plain air painters out there yeah. again. So that's really the only difference. Yeah, I don't even follow that many plain air people. So. Right. <laughs> I got. Yeah. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> um, how. Let's see. Oblivious and totally aware said, how is quarantine affecting your creativity? Not at all. I mean, other than positive, I mean, no negative way, but just like really just kind of having more time and, and having more kind of, there's also like uh you know, when you work a job, there's like a, a bit of your like mental, I don't know, load that you, you splooge into that place. <laughs> and so, having that for your art, you get to splooge all over your art. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. I just think that in that way, it's a positive. Just having all that like mental kind of like um, attention that you get to spend on your work, at least for me, it seems like a huge benefit. Yeah, definitely. No, I feel the same way about it that way too. It's like, I, um, there's no break in what I have to do or like what I want to do. Like I can literally just do what I want right, <laughs> right now for yeah. the foreseeable future, at least. <laughs> yeah. That's great. So yeah, just taking advantage of that time and trying to be creative within like the only real restrictions right now. And they're kind of starting to lift again is like, just for me, like back to plain air and <laughs> just not going to all the places I've always wanted to. But, yeah. um, I mean, I figure out a way to get around that and just painting inside or, or in the yard or whatever and just finding other place to go. It's like you don't necessarily have to go to a park to go to to do like plein air stuff. So 
just like yeah. I guess in that way creativity and like choosing different subject matter uh, can you play <laughs> Eric <laughs> still need to get that uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah I agree <laughs> uh, awesome are we done with that one I think so um, okay Mario J. Dana. Oh, same, same dude from earlier. <laughs> one, one question per person. Nice try. <laughs> nice try. Who would win in a fight, the Slap Chop guy or Flea from Red Hot Chili Peppers? The the what? <laughs> the Slap Chop guy. No, I remember who, who we're talking about. He was the guy on the Slap Chop um, infomercial. Vince slap Offer. Chop guy. And this is a slap, like a slapping competition, like slapping each other in the face. No, do like you remember the slap chop? Uh, maybe you don't remember. Slap chop, I'm trying. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's the sham wow guy. Okay. The sham wow guy? Yeah. And the question is Who would win a fight? Who would win a fight? Yeah. Oh, that's, um, that's a great or question. Flea from Wet Red Hot. I don't even remember. Oh, I know Flea. Uh, I don't know Slap Chop. It's funny that you're, it sounds like you're the opposite. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know Flea from Red Hot, but I don't remember what he looks like. He's like short, got a gap, uh, a little intense. Oh, guy. okay. All right, let's see Slap Chop. Oh, that guy, the Sham Wow guy. Well, the Sham Wow guy's in prison, right? He probably got yeah, those, yeah. He's probably got that, that uh, prison bod right now. Uh, which is a great question. Thanks, Mario, <laughs> for this great question. Would uh, the slap chop guy, I don't know, Flea is also punk rock. Like, right. And he's so intense when you watch him on stage. He's like a ball of <laughs> of energy. So I'm going to put my money on Flea. I think so, yeah. I wonder, I wonder what slap chop's uh, height is. That's going to play a big part. <laughs> I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna bet. Flea. He is six foot three. Wow, bigger than I thought. Uh, he He's also like fifty six years guy. old. Slap chop is. Yeah. Holy shit! How old is Flea though? He's probably. He's probably pretty, pretty old, old too. But you know, he's probably got that like. He's probably done yoga for years, so he's got that like. That old. He's fifty seven, so yeah. It's, uh, close in age yeah and i bet flea is like a like a brown belt in some kind of like fucking martial arts um let's see personal life <laughs> yes it's personal uh let's see uh what has he got he's got a, I, 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 I i bet he has a martial <laughs> arts belt of some sort that's all I'm looking through his wikipedia for see if any any, Does uh, Flea have a last name? How did you look him up? Uh, I just looked up Flea Musician or Flea Red Hot Chili Peppers. His name is Michael Peter Balzari. Australian-American. <laughs> I didn't know right. that. That's good to know. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I, I'm leaning toward Flea. I feel like he probably had to to knock a few heads around coming up in the punk scene. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And I don't know. I don't know enough about Vince Offer to to know if he did the same thing or not. But my guess is probably not. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> all right, all right. So, so we do. We're both on the flea flea I, camp. <laughs> I am. All right. Um, Anna Lyle Art asks: Have you ever considered doing an artist collab outside of murals? Thoughts on collabs in general. Well, I know you're not that into collabs. Yeah, I'm not a fan. <laughs> I mean, I'm not. I, mean, I am a fan if someone does it and they do it well. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't know. I'm just not that big into it myself. Mm -hmm. uh, how about you? Um, Have you ever collaborated with someone in general? Not on anything like not in a serious way, like a, mm -hmm. like any sort of exhibited piece of art or anything, but. Yeah, I mean, just like kind of messing around <laughs> on the same canvas or piece of paper or whatever. Yeah. And that could be fun, but it's not usually something I um, necessarily like think of as like my own art. Like right. um, my collaborating is more like, I don't know, working with models or photographers or something like that. Mm. Um, All right. Uh, with ideas, I think I'm more open to collaborating. Um, mm. yeah, I guess like, 
in a way, Vanessa and I collaborate on little things here and there, not necessarily like painting on the same piece, but we like, sometimes we'll just come up with ideas to right. um, work on together. But and yeah, maybe I would be more open to collaborating if it was like something that seemed like um, like a good fit or something like that. You know, like like I feel like a lot of times when someone like tries to collab collabo <laughs> yeah. with me, bro. Yeah, <laughs> it's always someone where I'm like, I don't know how like your art would mesh with my art. It's mm -hmm. A lot of times it seems like someone who like, that's what they do. Like that's like their thing. Mm -hmm. And they're, I don't want to say always, but a lot of times, at least the people that kind of try to do it with me seem like they're trying to do it to be like friends or to, I don't know, own a piece of my art for cheap or to get some sort of like way of, I don't know, showing that they have done work with me. Do you know what I mean? And mm. like a weird, like, um, I don't know, like the same thing MJ used to do with models like kind of thing. Cloud chasing. <laughs> a bit. Yeah. Mm. Where it's like, where maybe if I was like talking to an artist who I really appreciated their work and they really appreciated mine, like there was like this mutual respect for each other's work mm -hmm. and we started talking and an idea presented itself that would be right. awesome to try. Right then that would be all right. But mm -hmm. if you're like, hey, you want to collab on a piece? And I'm like, who are you? I don't, <laughs> we're not even friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, let's say hi. Really? That let's happens. have a conversation. Mm -hmm. have, has that ever happened to you? I'm sure it has, but yeah, same thing. I'm yeah. like, I ignore it. <laughs> yeah, it's time. like, I don't even know you. And mm -hmm. then I don't even like know your work. Or if I, like if we're at a group show and you're like, let's collab on a piece. I'm like, where's yours? <laughs> and I don't like it, then it's like, I mean, I've very clearly said no to people, mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah, it's, it's, I think there's, it would have to be something like organic that like, where like I had an idea or someone else had an idea and we we're like, oh, that might be actually really fucking cool. Mm -hmm. You want to try that out? Yeah. Like that I would be okay with, but I've never had that experience. Mm. It always seems like the reason someone's trying to collaborate is for reasons that aren't like to create awesome work yeah i also feel like there's a lot of talk around collaboration not a lot of people actually collaborating mm. like there's a lot of people like yeah we should do that and it doesn't ever actually come through yeah so yeah. i just yeah so far everyone I, i'm not a fucking collaborator in that <laughs> kind of way mm -hmm. i already know how much of like a control freak i am yeah so the idea would have to be good for me to be like, yeah, let's do that. Mm -hmm. But it's never been presented that way. It's always been presented in a way where it's just instantly I'm not in into it. So, yeah, with murals, I feel like that is way more ripe for collaboration, right? Because it just takes more manpower to, to create a, a mural for the most part. Yeah, um, maybe. I don't know. Even then, I'm like still like a lot of the murals I like is either like one or two artists. Mm. Usually, it's one artist with assistance, but mm. every once in a while, there's like two artists. And usually, then it's like two artists on the same skill level, but they bring two different skills. They mm -hmm. just, they're on the same level as far as like talent. Right. They just have two different like things they focus on mm -hmm. and they try to figure out how to mesh those two things together. Um, so I don't know. I mean, in that way, I understand it, but for the most part, I don't want to see like six different artists on a wall doing six different things. I feel like very yeah. often that shit looks like something I'm not that into. Mm. I mean, it, it can come out perfectly fine, but when I see a mural, if I compare that to a mural where there's just one voice and assistance helping them create that image, a lot of times that thing's to me is a way better piece. Mm. Um, you know, there's not egos involved and not like just pure chaos. It's, mm -hmm. it's a piece that's well composed and, and done well for the most part. Usually. Mm -hmm. I mean, not usually actually probably very unusually, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the murals I like the most usually are one or two voices, mm -hmm. usually one. 
Wow. Is it usually like a crew too? Usually, or what do you, do you even count that as a collaboration? Oh, like Edom Crew or something yeah. like that? Yeah, I mean, like even then, I think that they compose the image pre going to the wall, probably. Right, that's my. And then I they would, would think so. have an overall idea of what they're going to tackle and who has the better, you know, mm -hmm. skill for this thing or that thing. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't think most collaborative murals are like that. Except for on the highest level, I think they come to it with like a very clear plan. Mm. Outside of that, I think a lot of like people they're more are like, like graffiti mm. style, where everybody's kind of doing yeah. their own thing in the same way. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And you see that a lot with like m collaborative murals with like six people. You know? Yeah. All right, <laughs> that's not my thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no diss. <laughs> Do whatever you want. Make yourself happy. Mm -hmm. I just not for me. Mm. Um, and I think it's. There's better ways of doing it. Hmm. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, outside of murals, just not that into collaborating. Even inside of murals. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I feel like there's it, it takes a specific level and respect between artists for it to come out well, is my opinion, on any platform. I think you can probably collaborate on paintings if you're at equal levels of of art and respect and you're both trying to achieve something that you've thought through prior to going to whatever you're doing and maybe even working on a shitload of drawings up to that point, you know, back and forth where you're like, I thought of this and going back and forth until mm -hmm. you find something you're happy with and then going, all right, let's tackle this thing together. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that's how most collaborations work. Mm -hmm. um, so... You know, and I'm sure there's other ways of doing it. I just, I that's how I would have to probably do it. It's a lot of planning, a lot of like figuring out shit prior to making the final piece. Yeah. Uh, and having purpose. That's the other thing. It's like they would have to, like some, for instance, me and MJ, right? If I'm, if we're working on a mural, sometimes MJ will say like, maybe we should just add this. And my mind is always like, Why? You know, like, why would you add that? And mm -hmm. and what's the purpose? What what purpose does it serve? Because if it, the purpose is just to, like, add stuff, then I'm not really going to be okay with that. Mm -hmm. um, and you would have to find someone who also has that probably similar mindset. Right. Of having intention and purpose for why they do what they do. Mm -hmm. So at least even if I don't want it, or if I don't necessarily want to go that way, maybe they can explain why they think it's it's it why it deserves to be in the piece mm. um but haven't found that person yet mm. uh and i'm perfectly fine not finding that person <laughs> <Yeah>. either <laughs> uh all right lone wolf josh <laughs> Ow! werewolf of london uh plague of crows asked to josh don't you dare, motherfucker. <laughs> Would you rather live in a houseboat on Pee Pee River or on a log cabin on Poo Poo Mountain? Good question. Good question. I would... Oh, God damn. This is disgusting. <laughs> oh, well. It seems like you're... I mean, first of all, poop is the worst thing. <laughs> what kind of poop, first of all? Because human poop is the worst thing ever invented. <laughs> yeah. Um, but if it's like, you know, like cow poop, might be okay with that. <laughs> well, on the other hand, I feel like all pee is equal. You know what I mean? All pee is disgusting. <laughs> yeah. There's no like, um, there's no, there's no animal pee that I'm more okay with than human pee. Mm. And also, being on a boat, being boat sick. <laughs> In a pee pee river sounds horrific. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> really good question. Um, I think, depending on the poop, as long as it's not human poop I th and dog poop, as long as it was like herbivore poop, <laughs> yeah. I think I would go with Poo Poo Mountain. <laughs> All right. Um, question for Plague of Crows. I need more clarification on this. Um, <laughs> 
question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is the poop replenished all the time? Like, is it always fresh? Right, fresh poop. That's important, yeah. Or does it dry? Good point, good <laughs> point, yes. Huh. Does the poop dry? Because then pretty much everything is poop, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, good question. These are good, important questions. <laughs> if it's always fresh poop, I couldn't handle that. Yeah. Um, so I'd have to do the houseboat on PP River. Ugh, I don't think I can do pee pee river. <laughs> Even though I hate poop, ask MJ. She'll, yeah. I fucking hate my gag reflex is horrible, but I would literally rather live in a home with like HEPA filters and just like yeah. clean air inside and then just put on a respirator and drive out of there. <laughs> yeah. Then pee. Cause that's the thing. Well, Back to your question of drying or yeah or fresh poop. Because pee, if it's a river, it's always going to be fresh. It's always going to be fresh. Yeah. Even if it wasn't fresh, even if the river st- well, got stagnant, that'd be <laughs> yeah. worse. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, that's the thing is I can't escape the pee. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. I think I got to go. Unless it's human poop, of course. <laughs> And then I'll suffer through pee pee moan river. <laughs> These are the questions that people tune in for. <laughs> right. Uh, so you're pee pee river, huh? Yeah, I just don't think I got to handle fresh poop every day. Oh. I don't think you'd ever get used to it. You're going to smell you like do. shit. All your things are going to smell like you shit. You do get used to it. I lived in Los Banos for years. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That place smells horrible. And you, go, you live <laughs> that there is for, very true. That for is. five years and you're like, I don't smell like shit anymore. <laughs> that uh, is, yeah, that is the poo-poo plains. <laughs> exactly. And yeah, when I first moved there, I think I've talked about this before, but I used to look around at people breathing through their nose <laughs> and freak the fuck out. <laughs> and be like, do people not smell this shit? Is it just me? Like, is there something wrong with me? Uh, yeah. So, so yeah. So, so yeah. But you're not living on top of it necessarily. I mean, it's nearby. But. Pretty damn close. <laughs> yeah. Huh. I well, don't know. I think I'm still going with PP River. Yeah, do you? <laughs> no judgment here. Uh, all right. <laughs> Uh, what else we got? Uh, Nana Chica Art asks, how do you find shows outside of your area to apply to? Uh, <laughs> I wanted to say a super douchey answer, but I didn't know if it was going to read douchey <laughs> enough to be a joke, which was, um, I don't find shows. They find me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. But that's basically your answer, right? It's pretty pretty much what it is. It's mm-hmm. like, uh, I mean, you just try to find the galleries that you want to show with and mm-hmm. see if they want to show with you, whether that be, I don't know. I don't know how to get people's, I don't even try to get galleries' attention, really. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you can always go in, if you're ever in an area where you're visiting and there's a gallery that you might be able to go in and like say mm-hmm. hi or something. Yeah, that's huge. Um, that's always a positive or, you know, uh, see if any galleries are following you. That's always a positive. Yeah. That always helps. Yeah. If you look in your, your followers and you type in gallery, Mm -hmm. you might be able to see like, oh shit, this gallery follows me. That's cool. Maybe I have a chance Mm -hmm. and maybe reach out to them. Or if you, you know, know someone who shows with them a lot and has a really good relationship Mm -hmm. with a gallery that's you know, outside your area and you can, you know, see if they're willing to introduce you or, or kind of like, you know, tell them about, you know, give them a little like, Hey, you should check out my buddy's work. He's really good. Or she's really good. Even though, I mean, girls aren't funny. Um, (laughs) so yeah, I mean, it's just kind of, it's that whole social part of being an artist. You know, it's like someone yeah. saying, like, how do you become friends with someone? You're like, I don't fucking know. You just kind of happen, <laughs> happens over time. <laughs> uh, I mean, you can put some effort into it for sure, but if it doesn't work, I mean, if it doesn't, no one likes a person that's trying to, like, be all up in their face, you know, all up in their right. v- music videos, <laughs> all of, you know, you know, if you want to come to, if you want to, uh, 
What is it? I forget. God damn it. Come to death row is all I'm trying to say. Come to death row. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, God damn it. Why don't I know that Suge Knight Source Award uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, fucking comment? Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, but yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's a tricky question, and at the same time, maybe think, how much do I want to be in galleries at the same time? You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true too. Uh, and and why do I want to be in galleries? And maybe I should do the math and figure out the business behind that before I commit a lot of my effort into pursuing these relationships without realizing that maybe it's not that necessary to go outside depending on where you're at you might not need to really go outside of your area you know for galleries maybe think i'll work with a local gallery and then i'll try to get more commissions outside Mm -hmm. outside of um you know my area yeah also a lot of galleries do that like call for artists Mm -hmm. um they're doing like a um some sort of juried group right. show. Yeah, MJ just did that for Think Space. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What was it called again? I forget I what know. it was called, but yeah, I remember seeing that. Yeah, she did it. She got in. So nice. Hopefully, the That's hope awesome. is that she can, you know, do well at the show mm-hmm. and then potentially work with them more. Yeah, get on their radar that way. Like yeah, try to go. If you see a gallery that has a lot of group shows, mm-hmm. try to see how you can get in that group show. Cause, yeah, Modern yeah. Eden is like always putting out calls for artists. Yeah, so, you know, think about that. Like, oh, this group show, and then if you do well, maybe you can show more with them. And then if you sell more work, then maybe you can work in, work it, work yourself into like a, a bigger show with them or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um but it's all just kind of little, little tiny itty bitty steps. And right. sometimes you might take a big, huge jump in a gallery. Um, and hopefully you're ready to do that big jump when you get that opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause no one likes to do a solo show and sell one piece. You're like, cool. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I didn't have any collectors here because <laughs> right. I, took it i took that huge leap and it didn't pay off Mm -hmm. you know maybe it does and whatever but those are those big risks that might not pay off it's that finger cross hopefully your art's good enough hopefully you can promote it good enough hopefully they can this is such a complicated question Mm -hmm. uh with so many i mean yeah i don't know yeah another complicated question just brought up was like how do you know when you're ready for a solo show (laughs) right yeah. It's like so many different factors that go into it. Yeah. I mean, even just, you might have a shit show, solo show, and then I, I know people who might not sell that much work heat, like in a certain area, and then they'll put their work up somewhere else, and mm-hmm. they will sell that shit like hotcakes. Yep. You know, it, it it's a weird fucking thing where just because you failed at a solo show doesn't mean you, you shouldn't have a solo show. It just means you shouldn't have a solo show there, maybe. You know, or maybe their roster is so fucking deep that you just get lost in it. Mm. And everyone's waiting for certain people for them to show, but everyone else is kind of, you know, doesn't get the maybe the promotion that that, that those people do and don't, doesn't get the love and all the fucking effort. That, mm-hmm. right? So, I don't know. It's so much it's so much more complicated than just trying to find a gallery. Yeah. to show and it's finding the right gallery building that relationship up, maybe dipping your toe into that gallery to see if you're good, if you're a good fit, and then, you know, working yourself up to more and more work, you know? And I mean, I get really excited if I, if I'm in a show, a group show and I sell like my two, if I have two pieces and then I sell them to them, like, mm-hmm. cool. Like, yeah. And it's not even like cool. Like that's great. Cause maybe I can work with them more. It's like, cool. Maybe I found a spot where I fit well and I can put a couple more pieces in. If those sell, then I'm like, Oh wow. Well we have, we have a little bit more depth than just selling two pieces here, mm-hmm. you know? So m- maybe I can start gaining more and more piece, more and more, not only just collectors, but, but, um, putting more pieces of work into shows until, you know, if you have like a, a duo show or, you and like another artist or four artists or some shit and you can sell a shitload of that work Mm -hmm. then you're like cool i have a real solid home for a lot of my work now Mm. 
Yeah, but that that shit is hard to find. I mean, it takes a lot of little stabs and a lot of uh, work and, you know, a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah, I'm wondering if artists should be more proactive about moving their work around. Mm. I just know it takes a lot of effort and possibly, like, shipping costs and all that shit too right but it does seem like maybe you can uh get that thing going where uh, it's just like in front of fresh eyes mm-hmm. and so like you ever have that thing where you like you have your stuff at a gallery and you move it to a different gallery and it immediately sells mm-hmm. so yeah. like i'm wondering if if you were to do that a lot more right <laughs> would that make your sales go up or not i'm sure it would mm-hmm. and i'm sure you could uh you know, I mean, that's one of the issues where, like, you like some galleries feel like they should get only new work. Mm-hmm. Like, but what if this work is better than what I give you? <laughs> right. Like, why don't you want this? Uh, yeah, I think I don't know. Or, I guess they want stuff that hasn't been shipped, shopped around everywhere. But you're right. Like, it should matter. Silly. Like, if they, um, they're if the work with, is good and they think they could sell it, why wouldn't they want it? Yeah. <laughs> and if you have your own collectors, mm-hmm. which you should, mm-hmm. then who cares? Who cares what the collectors of that gallery didn't want? Mm-hmm. If your collectors are super stoked on it, then you should be like, cool. You know, we found a good home for you. Right. Uh, it's just silly thinking, I think. Um, but, you know, people are people. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, what was what I was gonna say about the whole like finding shows, um, in the plein air world, that's pretty much how it works. Is like you you go to call calls for artists. Mm. That's basically how they how they do it. Like the prize money is basically taken out of the application fees. Mm-hmm. So, um, th- and for call for artists, is there like a beret that gets shined in the into the clouds? The <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 Commissioner Gordon, <laughs> a little beret. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, like there's a bunch of, of websites that just have a list of, of places you could apply to. So um, yeah, I mean, it, it's like everything else. The drawback is that you have to pay that money and you're not necessarily guaranteed to get in just because you paid for the application if it's a juried show. So there's yeah. the, the pros and cons of that. I mean, the pro is that it's laid out there for you and you know exactly what you're getting into if you get in. So, um, that's another route, but it's, I don't think it's as common as, um, gallery shows, but I'm sure there's calls for like, there's a, um, website for calls for artists. If you want to go that route, Mm. just for, I think me and you both, we're just more on that route of trying to build up our, like having people come to you more. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it it's, out. it's finding like a couple of galleries I want to work with for like a limited amount of time and then really trying to like gain your own self-sufficiency. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And yeah. And also with the whole, like if, if you were to kind of move your paintings around, I think galleries would have to be more open to that idea too, of, of sending things around too. And yeah. I don't know, I don't know how galleries are with each other. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've definitely done it before. Where like, yeah, oh, me too. Galleries will store work, and you're like, hey, can I get that at another gallery? I mm-hmm. have a show coming up, and I want to send it there. Mm-hmm. And I've never had any issues. Yeah. I mean, maybe a little bit sometimes. Mm. Um, yeah, maybe galleries are are more open to that because they don't want um, they don't want inventory sitting around in their yeah. thing that isn't selling either. So. Yeah, yeah. Are there any more questions? Uh, we got one more. Uh, same girl. Uh, do you guys have a business license to sell your art? Not sure if I have to get one. Uh, well, we just me and MJ just got a business license for our mural. Oh, okay. Stuff. Uh, I don't think you need it unless you have like a certain amount of sales. Mm. Uh, I know I got one a long time ago because I wanted to. Um, buy from certain places that only sell to people with the uh, business license. Mm-hmm. So I did that, but yeah, you end up having to pay taxes on, on the stuff you sell. Right. Yeah. So yes. I don't think it's like a hundred percent necessary if you're selling no. under a certain amount, but it's not necessary. I think until you're starting to make like real money. Mm-hmm. I mean, don't tell the government I said that, but <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. 
I mean, basically, yeah. Uh, um, I mean, I end up barely paying that much in business tax anyway. Right. right at the end of the year, I don't sell that much out of. Um, like, if you're selling through galleries only, you don't need one. Yeah. Yeah. So. So no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You don't need it just to, like sell online or anything. I don't think. No. 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 And if you can, like, launder that money through us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? It'll be fine. <laughs> if you don't want your website to get shut down, you know. Yeah, if you don't want uh, those, so. those viruses to keep popping up on your website, then, <laughs> yeah. you know. Exactly. Maybe be sending some money. And, uh, <laughs> you know. All right. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Uh, where are we at? We're at an hour and a half. Okay. Episode a hundred. We're talking about, you know, I mean, we did this a hundred fucking times, Sergio. Sometimes with help of others, but yeah. sometimes without me, sometimes <laughs> with me, mm -hmm. sometimes without you. Yeah, but still, pretty impressive. <laughs> it's a third of a year. Yeah. Uh, Wait, a third of a year? What do you mean? Kind of three sixty five. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. I mean. Yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying. <laughs> I was just thinking of weeks, but yeah. Uh, Days. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, you're welcome, guys. <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what else to talk about. Uh, I think everything I actually had written down, um, we talked about. I can try to pull up something else if you want to keep talking. Well, I came in here with Zip. <laughs> Good for you, Sergio. <laughs> um... Do you still got the Carol Baskin song stuck in your head? Uh, Carol Baskin. <laughs> yeah. Killed her husband. Whacked him. <laughs> <laughs> I had Takashi 6 9 on my thing. Oh, really? Uh, I've only ever heard that one song. What's it called? Gummo or something? Gummo. I think that's the only one I've ever heard, too. <laughs> yeah. I don't care for that guy Me at all. Yeah, I mean... Everything about his personal life aside, I just don't really care for the music at all. He's a he's a Kardashian that's pretending he's tough. Hmm. He's the same same shit. He's hmm. just a attention seeker. Hmm. They're all like that. Like the more stupid shit you do and people talk about, the better. Hmm. Uh, so I guess he did the stupidest thing. Or at least that's what the streets is saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but, but, oh, th there was one thing. Where did I put that? Um, oh, so that show Dicky, Dick, Dicky. Oh, Dave, Dave. Yeah, yeah. I was watching it and they were there, uh, which I actually really liked the show. I thought it was pr there's the last, the final season, the like first, maybe like five minutes of the final season. I laughed so hard it might be one of the funniest things i've ever seen yeah, talking shit. about episodes or yeah episodes oh, okay, okay. the finale episode okay the first five minutes uh good god it's so good i should show you after this <laughs> oh right. my fucking god it's so good do you have to have the context of the show for it or? no not okay. at all, <laughs> all <right. laughs> It's so good. Is it on uh, YouTube? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, I can pull it up if you want to watch it now. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> uh, but um, there's a moment where he's talking about like creators. We all Oops. What's going on? Uh, where he's talking about uh, like artists and how um, how we share too much of the process or something like that, and how okay. how it's much better to. Um, how it's much better to kind of like keep the it was something to do with like like you lose the magic if you share too much and he okay. he did it he he said it so well that it like it, it convinced me at least for the moment being and i had to like really think about it after that um uh <laughs> god i can't wait for this uh so yeah. all right so i kind of I mean, I don't know what to do to... Uh, are we just going to sit in silence? Are you going to try to edit this part out? Until I guess, we finish I don't know. watching it? We'll put on our hold music. A hundred, a hundred, a hundred. A hundred, a hundred, a hundred. All right, here we go. So I, I would say we probably should cut this a Yeah, oh, for sure. I just, just go to the very beginning. 
and play. So this is it's just a heads up before we we start. Uh, it's starting off. He sometimes will like show like music videos because he's a he's a he's supposed to be. It's kind of like he's playing himself. Okay, yeah. So he's a he's a I mean, he's a little dicky. So he's a yeah, rapper, yeah. Mm-hmm. and he's at uh he's he's a little rapper. And this is like sometimes they'll show like music videos he does or shit like that. Mm-hmm. So um, this isn't like. Yeah, I think it's kind of aware. You're, you should be aware, but I wasn't sure. Okay. Yeah. For this this specific scene. Mm. A bit off the dick, <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. I don't even remember what the fuck we were talking about. To be honest, uh, you're talking about. Um, oh. I was like saying something that <laughs> and I was like, let's just watch this. <laughs> so yeah, so that was I don't know what you thought about that. <laughs> that was uh, pretty genius. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was when I first watched it, I laughed so hard I couldn't stop laughing. Like throughout the whole thing? No, it's like the climax right at the very end oh. with uh, um with uh Don Quixote. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that part, I like it just like broke me. <laughs> just how absurd that last little bit was. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, but yeah. yeah, so yeah, so go watch Dave, I guess. Yeah. If you're looking for something to watch, that got me. I want to see it. <laughs> Hell yeah, uh, that's yeah, good. It's do they usually start with like a rat down? Like no, that, that was the first time, and so uh, you're kind of confused as to what's happening. Mm. I mean, he does like little like rap things in the show, but oh, like. Okay. That time, and then when they cut to like that the, the <laughs> yeah. room of people or whatever, it's uh-huh. like, uh, you're like, oh, that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's yeah. pretty brilliant. Like the, the lyrics of that, <laughs> just play that together like that. Even the way he wrapped it with like the little like conversations in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but, but yeah, so there's a, I think there's an episode, I can't remember exactly which one, I think it's one where there's like, um, it's like him and his girlfriend, they go, uh, to her family, mm-hmm. it's like a whole thing, it's actually a super, I think it's like a really good episode, have you ever watched ATL? No. Or Atlanta, I mean, mm-hmm. ATL, Atlanta, mm-hmm. you haven't watched it? No. God damn, Sergio. <laughs> uh yeah, well, it kind of, I mean, Atlanta's way better than this show, but this show has those, like, feelings, to, like, those moments, too, where you're like, God, there's some, like, really smart things happening in this show. Okay. And really, like, uh, I don't know, like, uh, it's just, it's like having, like, the extreme, like, it's like having, like, this, like, crazy, like, that, you know, like, this crazy, absurd thing happening, and they'll have, like, these, like, little moments where you're like, God damn, that was, like, genius, kind of, how they... How they worked on all of this, mm. but uh, this shows like glimpses of it uh, that make me really enjoy it. Mm. Uh, but but there's a moment where he talks about like the magic of creating and kind of not having like kind of presenting it once it's all finished um, allows you to hold that. And I don't. Know, it just made me think about you know us as artists how we all like share everything on everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, don't know. I was just a topic I was going to bring up. I I was supposed to bring it up when it was fresh in my head after I watched it, but I think I watched it way before we started recording again. So, you know, like during the quarantine, we took oh, okay. a bit of a break. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, I'll talk about this. And now I'm like, I can't even remember the mm-hmm. shit that well. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I don't know. So if you watch the show, yeah. You know, Maybe you'll you'll catch that moment. You're like, oh, this is what Josh is talking about. Maybe I'll talk to him about it now that I've heard it. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe you'll think it's a dumb topic. I have no c- clue. I can't even remember. <laughs> it was just in my phone of things to maybe talk about. Well, the topic is interesting because yeah, it's the whole like like sharing all your time lapses, or whatever, like right. putting it all out there for free, basically. Yeah. And it's like, to what end? Like, right. are you doing it? As a marketing ploy, are you genuinely wanting to just share everything you know for right. free? And it, like, even if you know. did it as a marketing ploy, it's like, is your art sacri- if Are you sacrificing some of your art because of it, mm-hmm. or is it helping? You know, for future sales of your work, mm-hmm. you know, and and you're holding tight to like 
your your creative process Mm -hmm. or does it deter i mean i remember a while ago i tried to do like i was like oh you know what i'm gonna try doing before i started posting time lapses Mm. i was you know i would do like process like works in process work in process why does that sound weird? progress work. progress there yeah. you go uh work in progress shots and yeah. and i remember being like fuck work in progress shots i'm just gonna post complete images uh and then i realized mm-hmm. that like people enjoy the work in progress shots way more than the finished product pieces a lot of times mm-hmm. like i would get way more likes and stuff and right and feedback and stuff so i was like huh that's so weird but because I had kind of like the similar idea of like maybe once you – if you have something finished and you put it out there, people will be super stoked on it. Right. So, I don't know. Maybe I'm talking myself out a little Dickie's point. From the first <laughs> <time>. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like – because you do get like people who are invested in something if they see the, the process of it being made. Right. That's true. I know the last piece I – like the last big piece I did when I posted kind of the – a final image. Mm-hmm. A lot of people mentioned like, Oh, they've, they've been watching the entire time and they were, they were really waiting to see how it finally turned out. Mm. Uh, so there's also that. I don't know. Yeah. So I guess there's m- more than one way to skin a cat, I guess is the <laughs> point here. I guess. Uh, yeah. The, a lot of times, yeah. Work in progress shots will do better for me overall than, um, final then image. final images. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I don't always want to post work in progress shots. Yeah. Um, yeah. Especially not just for, for more likes, but I don't know yeah. if I'm playing that whole Instagram game anyway, it's like right. might as well. It's like not that much more yeah. effort. I think that that's like <clears throat> the whole like idea behind like using your stories. It's like you can post it right, and people can watch it for a limited time and then it goes away forever. Mm hmm. So I like post a shitload more of like work in progress on there. I might post like yeah. one or two on my actual feed. And a lot of times I'll go back and delete them anyways at some point. Oh, the uh, work in progress? Yeah. Oh, interesting. How come? Just because it's like, all right, you guys, if you had your chance to see it, you saw it. But mm-hmm. like. Is it so, more like keeping your, your feed cleaner? Yeah. It's a bit of like, I want you to just look at. If if you're new and you got here because you saw some work in progress, mm-hmm. you'll see like a like if you go through my thingy, you'll see like a like the maybe like the top couple rows or like a few rows or like yeah. work a lot of work in progress videos. Oh, okay, and then you'll get to a certain point. And it's just for the most part, it's just pictures of mm. of finished works. That's interesting. Um, with the idea of like this is what I actually want you to see, mm. but whatever gets you here, I guess is the mentality right yeah my my feed is all over the place right now my main feed at least because mm. it's all just like the the still life for the um right for like the first nine rows or whatever right. and uh, like the old stuff still gets likes on it mm-hmm. here and there and people will like i can tell what people are are following me for like if if uh if i get somebody who likes a bunch of painted roses stuff and starts following me, they're going to be kind of disappointed, <laughs> mm, right. but I don't know. I just feel like maybe there's the people who, uh, who are on my feed and being on there or like, um, just interacting with me regularly mm-hmm. are just into it because they like the way I paint. I don't know that. I guess that's my guess mm, for sure. So I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. Oh, it'll be interesting to see how things shake out what happens when you paint hot dogs and hamburgers so often <laughs> that when you go back to painting like figures people are like what the fuck is this shit <laughs> yeah i know exactly <laughs> and it'll happen give me more calabasas you bitch <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll see yeah <laughs> like i've been posting um some of those on reddit and that's been mm-hmm. interesting like people mostly share their feelings about the object itself on their more so than the than actually talking about the painting right yeah so they're like oh man it's, uh like mcchicken is my shit or whatever <laughs> like they, like that kind of thing is more thing sometimes you get like this whatever weird critique but yeah for the most part it's kind of it's kind of fun why wouldn't see. you do a popeye's chicken sandwich instead of a mcchicken um 
I think I did a McChicken just because um, somebody, yes, it was actually somebody on Reddit said, I want to see you do a McChicken. Mm. <laughs> and then I was like, okay. And then I, I did one and it didn't sell for a while, but like it got a lot of interesting response to it. Mm. So then when uh, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll try to do another one and see mm. what happens. <laughs> did it sell at, at the end? Uh, the first one has, yeah. Mm. I just posted a second one um, today, I think. Nice. Yeah. So we'll see. Let's get that my chicken while it's hot. <laughs> Hop on that dollar right. menu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's partly why. <laughs> Less expensive. <laughs> uh, but I, you know, like the Popeye chicken sandwich is so much better than the McChicken. It's better looking, at least. <laughs> you don't think it tastes better? Oh, it does. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I mean. It'll inspire you. you know? But I didn't even eat the second McChicken. I, I bought. I took one bite of it and was like, okay, I'll paint this. <laughs> right. But one bite of a McChicken and maybe you'll create a masterpiece is what I'm saying. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or did I say McChicken? Uh, Popeyes. Popeyes you meant, yeah. yeah. You know what I meant. <laughs> All right, uh, guys. The challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think we're done maybe. Do you have anything... So. You want to like go go to your page and buy some uh, affordable work for sure. What are they yeah. called? Paint drips. Paint drips. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Just go to my website. And they're all right there. Or just go to my Instagram. And they're all right there too. Uh, yeah. And my uh, profile yeah. got the link. And Sergio uh, commits to donating eighty percent of his <laughs> profits to uh, his love for candy. <laughs> right. Yeah. <that's> it. <laughs> Um, Speaking of, I've kind of come around a bit more to the whole artist support oh, pledge thing. no, you didn't. I'm still not going to do it. I'm still going to do the same thing I'm doing, but I don't know. If people feel like they want to spend the money on it, People it. can do whatever <laughs> the fuck they want. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> people can do whatever they want. I just want to point out how stupid it is. <laughs> I'm just doing what I want and that I'm pointing out how much how economically it is not great for the artist. Um, yeah, I still agree with that. We should be trying to convince people to buy our work, not each other. Mm. We should trade with each other and save that money. I mean, that's kind of the great thing about being an artist is if we don't have to pay for it, it's like, cool. We Because the whole idea is to donate 20% to other art, right? Basically, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's I, a lot. don't get me wrong. I, I buy work mm -hmm. and I try to support artists, not because of some thingy. Mm -hmm. I just do it because I'm like, oh, cool. And I try to keep track of like artists and see who I can afford. Yeah. And, you know, and see if I can find like little, what I consider bargains. So, yeah, I mean, but at the end of the day, it's like, how the fuck does that end up making artists sell more work i don't know maybe it does but in my head it doesn't mm. the fact that artists are having to buy it's like it's kind of like this weird thing of like artists need to make sure that artists can live it's like no you need outside money to come into this inside to inside our industry mm -hmm. I mean, right it makes no sense <sighs> I mean, but do whatever the fuck you want, guys. I mean, I'm not telling you how to spend your money. I'm just trying to point out how silly it might be. Mm. But I mean, this math is fresh because I grew up religious. And my parents gave 10% of their money to a church. Yeah. Know? So it was like, when you, I did the math a long time ago and realized how silly that was. So 20% mm -hmm. seems even sillier. Yeah. Um, you don't even get a piece of art out of giving to the church. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I guess that's one benefit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, support artists if you want. I just don't think you should feel like you should. That's the thing I don't like. Is like, I mean, artists are so like, like bleeding heart and like mm -hmm. want to help. You know, right? That we end up shooting ourselves in the foot because we just. It's like there's better ways of doing it. Mm. In my opinion, mm -hmm. you can help artists in more ways than trying to give them, throw your money at it. We don't make enough money as artists right. to, to do so. Yeah, that's still the, the thing I have the most issue with. Like, um, us as artists, our, our profit 
margin is so low yeah. that giving 20% even to another artist, that's cutting out a lot of of your, like that's way more than than what most people make in profit at the end of the day if they work out their expenses. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's also like, like Santa Rosa, they have like a 1%. If you're going to build buildings here, you have to put 1% towards the arts. Oh, really? Hmm. Then you realize like, oh, that means that this building going up would have to put like $200,000 towards arts. Hmm. And you're like, you know how much money, if I took 20% of my art would be compared to their 1%. Right. Their, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, I mean, I know we're trying to like do the right thing, but it's like, there are better ways to do this. Like we don't have money as part of our, like, like of what we can contribute to the art world. We have yeah. art. Like, <laughs> yeah. We have like art and hopefully some marketing skills. Mm -hmm. Those two things are extremely powerful. If you know how to wield them and, and point them in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So other than that, don't try to take the little bit of money artists have and go like, let's use this to empower us. It's like, we have other skills that are way more equipped to deal with issues other than than money, which mm -hmm. is the the fucking last thing we have. Our broke asses. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. What the fuck? I don't know. To me it's a silly it's uh it's like trying to do a good thing just having the wrong mentality mm -hmm. when trying to go about doing it. I mean mm. and you can do whatever the fuck you want. Go, you know, volunteer to a soup kitchen or whatever you like i'm not trying to tell people how to do things it just i'm just trying to point out how stupid i think it is <laughs> once again uh so yeah yeah no beef if you want to do it I, I mean if anyone wants to do it no judgment i just think you should probably do the business end of it mm. think about the business end before you do it mm -hmm. and go like how could i spend my time you know trying to accomplish this goal mm-hmm that would seem better used. Right. Know? Yeah. That's why I won't do it. Like I can't afford to do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe tell a fucking, maybe tell all the art companies to donate 3% of their fucking money to supporting the artists instead. Mm. You know, I mean, we pay a shitload of money for our art supplies. It's true. Um, I don't hear them trying to cough up any money to support the artists that have supported them. Hmm. Good I mean, point. It's stupid shit. It's like uh, us artists are broke as fuck. You guys are crazy if you're trying to give twenty percent away. Hmm. Uh, yeah, but good luck with it. Hopefully, it does something positive. I don't think it'll do what they think, but maybe something positive will come out of it. Hmm. I, 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 I think it's better that the people that are like, I'll donate my skills to like paint nurses and shit like that. That to me, I'm actually more kind of into because it's like using your skill mm -hmm. to do something positive, not money. Because we're not money makers. We're not. None of us are. I mean, not none of us, but uh, the majority of us are fucking not balling out of control. We're not. That's not our skill is making money. <laughs> yeah. But our skill is making artwork. So if someone's like, "I'm going to donate my artwork to paint a nurse or something," for I mean that. I mean, as not into that idea as I I am personally. I'd rather mm -hmm. just be like, you want to find a nurse that's into art and give her something that I think is good. Yeah. Um, but that to me makes way more sense because it's it's your skill. You know what I mean? Like your skill is creating artwork. You're you using that to, you know, make someone feel appreciated while at the same time actually getting some benefit uh, yourself through potentially marketing or some shit. Mm -hmm. I mean, that to me seems like a way more useful use of your time and, and effort because yeah. we have the skill of printing original artwork. Right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, not printing money. <laughs> yeah. We're not that talented. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, That's the eternal yeah. Artist dilemma. <laughs> yeah. And that's, I mean, no one's, most artists aren't good at business. Right. So when you see that, you're like, oh my God, <laughs> who thought of this shit? Mm. It's actually somebody out there, I forget their name, but yeah. A tobacco company? <laughs> yeah. Tobacco. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> Bill Gates. Um, uh, but yeah, yeah. You know who started it? I forget who, but yeah, it was some. It was a specific artist. Kind of goes like specific person who started Inktober. Mm, for sure. Yeah, I don't remember exactly who it was. Yeah, Inktober is a way better idea. No matter how you feel about it, it's way better of an idea. <laughs> Here, let's all help each other get boosted through like art marketing. One hundred percent, and no one loses money. <laughs> we right. all hopefully gain more money out of it. Mm. This one's like, let's all just pass money to the left and pretend we're doing something good. Mm. And hopefully, you're one of those people that are to the left. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, at least you get R out of it. That's the one thing I could yeah, I suppose. See, see as a pro. I don't know what I'm getting with 20% of my sales. I'm, I'm not doing it, so I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, the idea is you're not supposed to sell anything over $250 on yeah. the hashtag, I think. I forget how it works exactly. but So you're not supposed to sell anything over $250? And then take 25% of that, so $50, and then use that to buying art? Uh, no, you you sell $1,000 worth of art, and then you put $200 into spending that on other art. I think that's how it works. Okay. Or is it 250 or 200 It probably makes more sense that it'd be 200 because okay. then you just buy something else that somebody's selling at 200 I don't know. That's a good idea. It's yeah. It's like why c just cut out the money part of it and trade. <laughs> it's like after taxes, that's thirty percent. Mm. Then the twenty percent, that's fifty percent that you're left with. I mean, it's such a simple math. <laughs> and then art supplies, rent, yeah, food. Uh, right. And yeah, you're already all of in that. the negative. All of that is exactly why I'm not doing it. <laughs> yeah. And how, how much, I mean, maybe you're selling, maybe people that are selling a thousand dollar painting mm -hmm. extremely regularly can do that, but mm -hmm. it's like, you would have to sell, I don't know. So you'd probably have to sell like, to do that and still, I feel like survive, at least in California, you'd probably have to sell like, like four, uh, mm -hmm. $1,000 paintings That's like a at, month. at the least. Yeah. Yeah. So, good luck. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I, I feel like I don't know. I, I might know, like, two artists that maybe can. I, don't know, I, right. I would have really had to sit down and think of who I think can actually pull off these numbers. Hmm. It's silly. What, you, what you, everyone should be doing right now, if you have the fucking free time, is figuring out if you can actually pursue this shit in full time, like as a full time artist. Not trying to give away twenty percent of your money like a crazy person. <laughs> if you have some free time and you're like, finally, I can pursue my dream, don't let a goddamn hashtag ruin that mm. with some kind of like weird, I don't know, feeling that you should join this thing. Be be smarter. Do your business. Try to figure out if you can pursue this shit for reals. Mm -hmm. And if you can make a couple thousand uh, a month and you're like, holy shit, I might be able to survive. Don't feel pressured into giving 20% of that away mm -hmm. to the community that you already support by being a part of it. Well, I hope nobody's feeling pressured to do it. That's the thing, though. I feel like, I mean, even though there's no one pressuring, I feel like artists they they want to be a part of trends or some shit mm. and so there's this like overall like you know maybe i should join this thing or you feel a part of it it's like you're already part of the art community if you're part of the art community you don't need to you know if you see an artist that you really respect do it don't think that that's somehow a way to tie yourself into that person is by joining this thing that they do mm. i would say just you're if you're doing art you're in the art community yeah that's good enough <laughs> you're you're being an artist you're supporting the art community by contributing art to the art community mm. and hopefully you can find people who aren't in the art community who contribute money and then that's yeah. a great fucking thing right that's the reason why people buy music 
and go to concerts and watch movies and watch TV shows and any other fucking art form. Go eat at nice restaurants. Whatever. It's because they're supporting skilled, talented artists. Hmm. Um, and you can support it if you have the means, but to feel like it, we don't have enough money in this fucking market to to be like, let's just give away 20%. If you told a fucking, I don't know, Rihanna or some shit, hey, give 20% of your income to other artists, she'd be like, uh, fuck no. <laughs> what are you, crazy? And she's a fucking millionaire. Right. You know, she'd be like, I'll support them when I can. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to give fucking 20% of my income away, you crazy person. My God. It's just bad business. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's extremely bad business. And I think a dumb mentality. And you can do whatever you want with your money, but I, I'm going to call out dumb when I see it. Mm. Uh, and I would highly suggest no one does it. I Although think the people who... Do whatever you want. Who would be okay with that also would think Rihanna should give away her money like that. To yeah. Other artists. <laughs> yeah. They can think all they want, but, yeah. uh, that doesn't make it happen. Right. I mean, <laughs> sure. Um, oh. yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, think what you want to think, but she's good at business and you're right. not yeah. I mean, <laughs> exactly. And it is what it is. Uh, I'm not saying, fucking pull each other down i'm just saying don't fail trying to be nice mm, yeah that's a good point <laughs> uh, god huh. uh it's just extremely bad business in my opinion it's, and the fact that people are trying to like make it a thing seems silly to, that's one thing i wanted to bring up um, never mind i'll probably talk to you afterwards okay <laughs> it seems like a little shit talky but <laughs> Uh, but yeah all right. All right. Art, art world you just got critiqued by waiting to dry uh, yeah. <laughs> you're bad at business <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, right. and the, and people wonder why like shitty people like you know like metal balloon animals and shit like that <laughs> become popular and you're like the good art is not making it it's like yeah those motherfuckers are good at business too mm -hmm. well they're probably only good at business yeah uh and if you got good at business maybe we could take it you know maybe the art world can take back hold of the fucking the actual narrative around their fucking community that's true yeah that's a good point but instead businessmen take over and they fucking get to call themselves geniuses hmm. And we get to all fucking be like, 20%, let's all be poor forever. Mm. Let's never be successful so we can never have a fucking say in how worth, how, what good art is. But do whatever you guys want. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Like using business as a tool to make art and make the art world a better thing in general rather than looking at such an enemy all the time. Yeah, I mean success allows you a voice i mean mm. it just is true yeah so if you fail uh, and die on your sword i mean no one kind of gives a shit to be honest mm. especially in the art world <laughs> no one's gonna be like oh no he's a martyr he gave 20 percent you know we all care <sighs> it's not even a good mentality be the opposite it should be like they should instead be like well, instead of donating telling artists donate 20 percent, they should be trying to be like look we're going to explain business to all you artists while you guys are free so maybe you guys can all take a step forward in your art careers mm. rather than doing the very opposite for no reason uh for some i don't know some pats on the back or some shit mm -hmm. silly silly Hmm. I think I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> I talked enough shit. Uh, I'm this even, was another waiting to dry rant corner. I'm not even paying attention who's actually doing this thing because the second I see one of those things, I don't even look at the, like, they're fucking who it is. I just, next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. All right. Yeah. Waiting to dry. This has been it. 
A honey, a honey, a honey. <laughs> if you're still listening, <laughs> hold on to them honeys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>